A homeowner called me this week and said that she's got a few different estimates from a few different roofers, but they all look so different, she can't really figure out how to compare so that she knows which is the best one, which is the right one, which is the one that she should go with. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how you can get estimates from roofers that you can actually compare so that you know which is the right one. Now, you're not gonna be able to depend on multiple roofers to give you estimates that are gonna look similar enough that you're gonna be able to compare them, like I say, apples to apples. So for you to get estimates from the roofers that you can look at and compare, you need to give the roofer something that kind of identifies what you want the scope of work to be for your job, so that way you can request proposals from the roofers that will be similar. I don't mean similar in cost so much, but definitely similar in scope. Now, in order for you to be able to do this, you don't have to understand all the technical aspects of how to install a roof. I'm just gonna give you some basic facts that you can ask for in your request for proposal from the roofers. The measurements. Measurements are gonna be pretty important for you to see. And the reason for that is you wanna make sure that the roofers are, are estimating the same measurements, whether it's square footage or linear footage. And so you wanna know what the total square footage is going to be for what's called the field shingle. So that's the primary sh uh, shingle that you can see on your roof. But there's some other things that you're gonna to wanna to see measurements for too. You're gonna to wanna to see the linear footage of the hip and ridge shingles, the linear footage of drip edge, and the linear footage of any metal flashing. But what do you do if the measurements are different? So let's say that one roofer has 3,500 square feet of field shingles, or 35 squares, as it would be called, and another roofer has 3,300 square feet or 33 squares. Well, just ask the roofers why their measurements are different. You can tell them, you know, roofer A says it's supposed to be 35 squares and you've got 33 squares. Why is there such a big difference? Well, one reason could be that different roofers use different methods for measuring your roof. One roofer might hand measure your roof and another roofer might use aerial imagery to measure your roof. The other thing that could cause it to be different is most roofers are gonna build in what's called a waste factor. And the percentage of that waste factor could be different from roofer A to roofer B. Roofer A might calculate a 10% waste factor. Roofer B might calculate a 12% waste factor. So just make sure that you understand if the measurements are different, why they're different. Like I say, maybe the way that they measured, it may be the waste factor, or there may be some other reasons why the measurements are different. Shingle type. Make sure that the roofers are all quoting the same type of shingle. And what I don't mean by that is it doesn't have to be the same brand and model, but it does need to be the same kind of shingle because there's standard asphalt shingles and there's SPS shingles. That's kind of like a rubberized shingle that's typically gonna be an impact resistance shingle. What you don't wanna have happen is you've got roofer A quoting you a standard asphalt shingle and roofer B quoting you a class four impact resistant SBS shingle. You're not gonna be able to compare the costs of those because one is much more expensive than the other one. But then even within impact resistance shingles, there can be class three impact resistant shingle and class for impact resistant shingle, and there's gonna be a price difference between those as well. So like I said, make sure that roofer A is not quoting you class three and roofer B is quoting you class four or the costs aren't gonna be able to be compared. And there's even differences between class four shingles. So like I say, you can have a standard asphalt impact resistant class four shingle, or you can have an SBS modified class four impact resistant shingle. And that's why I'm saying, make sure that the roofers are quoting the same type of shingle. So your job is to do a little bit of research and find out what kind of shingle it is that you want on your house. And then just make sure that you're asking all of the roofers to quote that kind of shingle. Again, maybe you wanna ask them to quote a particular brand and model, or maybe you just want them to all quote 
like for example, a class four impact resistant SBS shingle. But let me give you a pro tip. Not all shingles are the same. So for example, if you decide that you want an SBS class four impact resistant shingle, then that's not going to be the same between different manufacturers because some manufacturers make a much better class four impact resistant SBS shingle than other manufacturers do. For example, the Malarkey Legacy and the Certainty Northgate are heavier, thicker shingles than would be like the Owens Corning Duration Flex or an Atlas Pinnacle. Does that necessarily mean that the Legacy and the Northgate are better shingles than the Duration Flex or the Pinnacle? Yes. The same principle holds true even if you're not getting an asphalt shingle. So for example, if you're wanting to get a metal roof, make sure that roofer A isn't quoting you a 29 gauge metal and roofer B is quoting you a 26 gauge metal. Those are different thicknesses. One's going to be more expensive than the other. If you're getting a synthetic product, make sure that roofer A isn't quoting you a, like a luxury product like Brava or Da Vinci and roofer B is quoting you like a thin synthetic shingle like F-Wave. The ridge type. So this is just like the field shingle, except that the hip and ridge shingle goes exactly where it sounds like they go. They go on all the peaks and hips of your roof. Make sure that all the roofers are quoting you the same type of ridge shingle because there's standard ridge shingles and there's impact resistant ridge shingles. There's low profile ridge shingles and there's high profile ridge shingles. So for example, if you want a high profile ridge on your house, make sure that you tell all the roofers to quote a high profile ridge. And this is a really important point. Make sure that the ridge shingle is the same manufacturer as the field shingles that you're getting. The underlayment. There's three basic types of underlayment that can be used on a roof. There's the black tar paper that you're probably used to seeing. There's a synthetic underlayment and there's something called ice and water shield. But basically you want to make sure that the primary underlayment is the same in all quotes. And I, I would not recommend that you have in your request for proposal, the black tar paper. Almost every roofer now is going to be using the synthetic felt. So just make sure that they're all including a synthetic felt in the quote. As far as ice and water shield goes, this is typically more of a specialty product and oftentimes it's required by your local county to be installed in certain areas of your roof only. You probably don't need it on your whole roof, but you're going to want to make sure that you know what the requirements are for where you live and make sure that you're asking all the roofers to be sure to include ice and water shield in those spots. For example, in the area where we live, ice and water shield is required on homes that are above 7,000 feet elevation, and it's required at all the eaves. In another county close to here, it's required on all the eaves and in all the valleys. So it may be similar where you live. Just find out what those requirements are by your local county. Make sure that all the roofers understand where you want it. If you want ice and water shield in areas on your roof, and it's not required by code, then you definitely need to make sure that you let the roofers know that. Oh, and another little pro tip is that if you're wanting the extended warranty from the shingle manufacturer from your roofer, or if the roofer is offering you the extended warranty, most shingle manufacturers are going to require that their underlayment is installed. So you wouldn't want, for example, um, to get the shingles from company A and the underlayment from company B. And there are some really cheap synthetic underlayments out there. And I do not recommend that you go with one of those. Cheap is rarely better. If all these roofing terms are confusing and you're needing some help understanding what they all mean, I recommend that you watch that video right up there. Drip edge. First of all, what is drip edge? Well, for a quick explanation, click this video right up here. The next thing that might cause differences in the estimates that you're seeing from your roofer is the amount of drip edge that's installed. Now, most building departments are going to require that drip edge is installed at all your eaves, but like we have here, some jurisdictions might require 
that drip edge gets installed on all the gable ends as well. So whether your local jurisdiction requires drip edge or not, you wanna make sure that drip edge isn't being quoted by roofer A only in your eaves and roofer B is quoting drip edge on all your eaves and all your gable ends too. Basically, all your eaves and all your gables, that's all of your roof edges. So the amount of drip edge roofer B would be quoting you would be significantly higher than what roofer A is quoting you. But what should you do for your roof? Should you have drip edge only in your eaves or on all the roof edges? I would recommend that you ask them to put drip edge on all your roof edges. It doesn't change the price by a whole lot and having it on all the roof edges is simply a better practice. Starter shingles. So just like with drip edge, your roofer might be planning to install starter shingles only on the eaves, or he might be planning to install it on the eaves and all the gable ends, so all of your roof edges. And just like with drip edge, your roofer might be quoting you only what's required by your local code, or he might be quoting you what's required by the shingle manufacturer. But what should you do on your roof? My recommendation would be that you ask all the roofers to install starter on all of the roof edges, all the eaves and all the gable ends. Again, it's not gonna change the price by a whole lot, but it's a better practice. But why would you want starter on all of your roof edges? Well, if you've got starter on the gable ends, then that's gonna give you better protection against wind taking the shingles off of those, those edges of your roof. Plus, the shingle manufacturers typically are going to give you a greater wind warranty if you've got starter shingles on all the edges. In some cases, if you've got it just at the eaves, your wind warranty might be 110 miles an hour. If you have it on all the roof edges, your wind warranty might be 130 miles an hour. Pipe flushing. The PVC pipes that penetrate your roof all have what's known as a pipe jack at the bottom of it. Now, normally these are going to either be plastic with a neoprene base or they might be metal with a neoprene base like this. So these are the typical kind of pipe jacks that a roofer is going to include in his quote. And so you want to make sure that all of the roofers are including the same number of pipe jacks to replace. You don't want roofer A to say that he's going to be replacing eight pipe jacks and roofer B only has five. You'd want to know why there would be that difference. But also you wanna make sure that the roofers are going to be replacing these. What you don't wanna have happen is have roofer A say he's gonna replace eight pipe jacks on your roof. Roofer B isn't gonna replace any of them because he's gonna to try to reuse them in order either to save you money or to save him money. So just be sure that all of the roofers are replacing all of your pipe jacks. But there's actually another kind of pipe jack too, one of which I think is a lot better. So this is called the ultimate pipe jack, and it's definitely an upgrade over the other kinds of pipe jacks that are most commonly included in quotes, but this is actually gonna save you from any potential future leak problems that so commonly show up with the other kind of pipe jack. So if you want some more information about this kind of pipe jack, be sure to watch this video right up here. And if you decide that this is the kind of pipe jack that you want on your roof, after you watch that video, be sure to let all the other roofers know that you want the ultimate pipe jack included in all of their quotes. Ventilation. To get a better understanding of what ventilation is and why you need it on your roof, I recommend that you watch this video right up here. Now the roofers that are quoting your re-roof project most likely are just going to quote the replacement of the same type and number of roof vents that you already have. So if you have 10 box vents, that's probably what they're gonna include in their quote. If you've got ridge vent, let's say you have 35 feet of ridge vent, then that's probably what they're gonna include in their quote. But if you don't have any ventilation in your roof right now, or if your ventilation is insufficient, then one or more of the roofers might actually recommend to you upgrading your ventilation, which may mean adding more vents to the roof or more intake vents in the soffit. So if one or more of the roofers has a different number of vents than the other ones, just ask that roofer why it is. But I'm gonna offer you some caution. Just because a roofer says that you need more ventilation in your roof doesn't actually mean that you do. If a roofer is telling you that, you want to make sure that he's explaining 
the reasons behind why he's saying that you need more roof ventilation. Because you want to make sure that a roofer isn't going to add more exhaust ventilation and screw up the ratio of intake to exhaust ventilation that has to be there. And then because you could end up getting moisture and snow being sucked into the intake vents and that just ends up sitting in your attic. Now, I'm not going to try to teach you how to be an expert in attic ventilation in this video, but if you want a deep dive into it so that way you understand why it's so important, watch this video right up here. Wall flashing. There's three basic types of wall flashing. There's head wall flashing, side wall flashing, and then a little piece of flashing called a soffit closure. So replacing wall flashing can actually be a little bit challenging. Sometimes it can be almost impossible because sidewall and head wall flashing go behind the siding or the stucco on your house and then extend down onto the roof. Sometimes you can see that flashing. It's on top of the shingles. Sometimes you can't see the flashing because it's underneath the shingles. But that flashing is there to, to seal off that intersection of a wall with your roof and just prevent water intrusion. And so if you have siding, it can kind of be a challenge to get that old flashing out from behind the siding. Or if the roofer doesn't take that, that flashing out and just wants to put new flashing in there, it can be a challenge to get that new flashing up behind that siding. And if you have stucco, it's even harder because you would have to then cut the stucco off take the old flashing out, put new flashing in, and then re-stucco and try to match it so that it looks like nothing <laughs> happened to your stucco. And so most roofers and most homeowners don't want to have to do something like that, especially on a stucco house. So if you don't see wall flashing in your roofer's quotes, it may be that they're just not planning to replace it because of the complications of doing it. And so this is an area where you're probably going to see some differences in your quotes because one roofer might say that he's going to replace it and another roofer might say that he's not planning to replace it. But your big question should be, does it need to be replaced? And that's where you're going to have to really develop a rapport with your roofer and talk to the roofer that you trust the most and get his opinion about whether or not it needs to be replaced. And make sure that the roofer is giving you some photos or some videos to back up his reasons for why he's saying that that flashing needs to be replaced on your house. Nails. Now this one may seem a little weird, a little quirky, but the number of nails used to nail down your shingles can actually affect the warranty that you get from the shingle manufacturer. Typically, four nails per shingle is going to get you a 100 or 110 mile an hour wind warranty. Six nails per shingle will get you 130 mile an hour wind warranty. So do you live in a high wind area? Then make sure that you're telling all of the roofers to use six nails per shingle. It's going to be a really small difference in the price, but it's going to end up giving you roofing estimates that you can compare apples to apples. Warranties. You're going to have two types of warranties for your roof. There's going to be the shingle manufacturer's warranty and the workmanship warranty from the roofer that's doing the installation. Sometimes if a roofer is putting an extended warranty from the shingle manufacturer into your quote, that can cause a difference in the price. And oftentimes it can be a fairly significant difference in the price. And likewise, if your roofer offers a seven-year workmanship warranty or a 10-year workmanship warranty, that's probably going to end up costing more than a two-year workmanship warranty. So just ask the roofers what the warranties are, what the warranty is from the shingle manufacturer, and if he's building an extended warranty into the quote, what the workmanship warranty is, and what that covers. If you're confused about these roofing terms and you haven't watched this video right here, I recommend that you watch that. And if you want to geek out on a bunch of just roofing information, watch this playlist right here.